Hello, I'm Michael Donnellan and I'm here with uh, Robert Green, who's director and professor in the Murray Center for Documentary Journalism here at MU. I'm also here with producer Ben Elliott and cinematographer and, cinematographer and filmmaker Rob Kolodny. And they are all involved in this year's film, Bisbee 17, which is showing at True False this year. So, for starters, what is Bisbee 17? Bennett, what is Bisbee 17? Bisbee 17 is a documentary about a small town in Arizona, um, a copper mining town where 100 years ago, this past July, uh, 1,200 miners went on strike. And instead of settling the strike, they were uh, the mining company rounded all the strikers and uh, rounded them up and put them on trains and shipped them out of town. And uh, we've been filming in this town um, watching them as they kind of commemorate this 100 year anniversary of the deportation. So the film we follow these characters as they talk about what happened and then they play, char they play characters and reenactments re is one word for it uh, of the actual the escalating strike that led to the deportation. So okay. they, were dr they were put in cattle cars and shipped to the deserts of New Mexico and dropped there and left there. And so um, the 100th anniversary was something the town was already uh, commemorating in some ways, and we came into town and added an element of recreation, which we don't, none of us really like regular documentary recreation, so it, we, we, we did something different. We, we consider them kind of like interventions in a way. Okay. And like, how did you hear the story of Bisbee 17? Like, where did you first discover it? Well, um, I started going to Bisbee in 2003 because uh, my mother-in-law bought a house there and I just fell in love with the town and I bought a book, there's a book called Bisbee 17 which is okay. about the, de the deportation and uh, it's a fictionalized account of the deportation and I just, it's one of the craziest stories and it, it's, it's also, it's just, I mean, it's, we, this, there's, a, there's a hidden history of radical movements in, in this country, radical mm -hmm. leftist movements in this country that we don't, I mean, Americans don't care about their history at all, but we definitely don't care about the history of like, you know, labor movements that were sometimes quite radical. And in 1910 to 1917, 1920 was a real crazy time for, for radical things happening on the left. And uh, the, the union that was forced out of town was, were the industrial workers of the world who were the, the, the sort of most uh, crazy radical union that's ever lived. They totally, or ever been in the U.S. at least, they, they, they totally wanted to envision a new world mm -hmm. uh, with like up, upending capital and stopping the war and, in, and said they were brutally defeated by you know, things like the deportation. So I've been wanting to tell like a story like that for a long time and specifically I love Bisbee and I mm -hmm. got to bring these guys to Bisbee and, and we fell in love with the place. It's, did you fall in love with the place, Rob? Did you fall in love with Bisbee? Yeah, I, I loved Bisbee. It's a very peculiar town. Uh, but one that leaves a mark on you. Okay, so like a deportation is always like a big talk in the media, like nowadays especially. So, uh, did Bisbee 17 like have a? Is it, was it, do you consider it like as a commentary on like even immigration today? Well, we started shooting. Well, first of all, Bisbee is a border town, so mm -hmm. immigration issues on a in a border town are way different than how we imagine them here in Missouri oh, yeah, or yeah. In, any other place um, because they deal with it every day and they almost. They deal with it in a much more complex way every day because families are spread over, you know, two towns. One of our char characters is Fernando Serrano, who was born in Tucson, grew up in Naco, Sonora, which is the town just over the border, and then spent a lot of time going back and forth between Bisbee and Naco. And so his life is is you know, you know, two nations basically. Mm -hmm. um, so he doesn't he doesn't consider. I mean, the things that we that we sort of make cliche about borders issues are just, in a border town it's just so different, the way they talk about it. Um, so that was the case when we started working on the film in October of 2016. A month later, Trump was elected and the, I guess the, the heat, what would you say, I guess the heat on, of the, on the stove was turned way up. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the story was always going to be a metaphor. We always wanted the 17 and Bisbee to 17 to be 2017, but you know, when things started happening that were so uh, awful and terrible, like people being pulled out of their 7-Eleven, you know, that they worked mm -hmm. at, or families being split up in front of, you know, grandparents being pulled away from grandchildren, it's things like this crazy stuff that's been happening, obviously it's, it's way worse, you know. So um, it, you, can't, you can't help but the film be a metaphor for what's going on today. And that, even if that wasn't the intention, it was always about bringing up the ghost from the past. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so in a raving review, Vox right. called you uh, a very unconventional filmmaker <laughs> and documentarian. So, like, what what do you kind of make of that, or what do you what do you think they meant by that? Ben, what do you think they meant by that? You're the filmmaker. <laughs> yeah, but you produced the movie, so. Um, I think that your whole approach to this movie is unlike anything else that like a traditional documentary has. Like there are musical scenes, like we have these people that we know as documentary characters acting, but like they're still themselves, so there's this like duality to everything. Like I think it's the biggest film that Robert's ever done. Um, and I think the least traditional, even though it looks like a Western. And it's a least traditional, but I mean, or the biggest film, part of because we had filmmakers like Rob make, you know, collaborating. We had the Ross brothers who've been here several times with several different films to True Foss. Mm -hmm. Rob is a filmmaker. Jared is a filmmaker. My producer, you know, we had a whole team of directors mm -hmm. basically. What, Rob, what, what was it like to make an unconventional documentary? Um, it, was, it was an amazing experience to be put uh, in an on-set production scenario with people that aren't necessarily only working under a singular direction and being given uh, sort of a little more freedom to rove and find the story. Um, and so that's an incredible atmosphere that Robert was able to create. Um, and I think unconventional is interesting to be in a true false because I mean, I am proud to say that this is my fifth film that I've directed that's gotten into true false. Mm -hmm. um, I've also edited two films, so I, this is, it, before it was my actual home, True Foss was my spiritual home and also the home of my films. I premiered three films here. And, um, and the, the thing that is interesting about the, the True Foss thing is, so it's a, a film festival about an idea. And the idea is that there's always this tension in documentary between fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. It's always the case. So that exists in every documentary. And some of some documentaries explore that. So most documentaries, the, the ones that would probably be called conventional, do everything they can to sort of eliminate those questions, the, the, mm -hmm. the sort of uh, ambiguous questions that come up when you're thinking about documentary, like, well, if it's supposed to be real, why is, you know, what are the, all these, you know, storytelling decisions that are clearly fictionalizing in some ways. Um, but I choose to, and, and the movies that we make are like, putting those questions on screen, those, those issues that are built into documentary that True Falls is about, we put them on screen so that we can explore them. And that's not just to have fun, it's not like a game, it's not because like, you know, we just think it's fun, it's actually because in this, in this case, the film is about the nature of the story, it's about the mm -hmm. nature of storytelling, it's about the way both sides mythologize the way they saw the world and those two mythologies cl clashed. And so you're, when you're seeing people reenact in this way, you're actually seeing the thinking that goes into uh, the, 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 the creation of those mythologies. You're thinking, you're seeing like the psychology of what would get two groups on a street clashing like that. Mm -hmm. And you're getting that through a different way. So it's not, it's meant the, the style that Trufos and that we have adopted is to get at different kinds of ways to tell stories and to get deeper and, and to use what I think is the actual um, stuff of documentary in a different way. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's not, I mean, I would actually say it's not very unconventional anymore to mix fiction and nonfiction. It couldn't be more conventional. It's, um, there's, there are several films at this festival that are doing that. Uh, there's several films every single year at this festival. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's time for people to be unconventional in a different way, I think. Yeah. So in, in the spirit of true false, like I know you've had films in Sundance and other film festivals, so what do you think makes True False so different from others? I'll let you answer that. Because Bennett has also had films at Sundance. Mm -hmm. There's just something about True False that's so friendly and inviting. And I feel like you go to a True False, like, and it's like, it feels like that goes without saying. But at a place like Sundance, you have so much press and, and competition against other filmmakers and it's just like it's so intimidating to be there because it's like such a big it's Sundance it's like mm -hmm. such a big deal and coming to True False i had been hearing about True False forever I remember when you screened Katie with Nine you called me and you got to ragtag and you were <laughs> like I'm at my favorite place in the world and like I just got like a muffin and like I'm gonna sit and watch movies but 
I was really nervous to come to True False for the first time, and it was like a month after we had been at Sundance, and everyone, everyone's um, like barriers are down. Like everyone just, it's all, it's a weekend or four days of just like friends and movies and drinking and fun, and it's like so great. And you just this went to what, Sundance after you've been to True False now twice, so what, what, yeah. how would you compare the two? I, I mean, they couldn't be more different. Uh, I think True False is probably my favorite festival that I've been to because it is fun, <laughs> you know? Very simply, it's fun, and I think Columbia lends itself as a town uh, to just create this world because it's not, uh, you know, it's not New York City, it's not Los Angeles. It's this place that exists and almost is as intertwined with the festival as the festival is intertwined with the films. Mm -hmm. It creates like a fully realized sort of little world that all these filmmakers descend upon, but there's not really any kind of hierarchy between the filmmakers and people from the town and people from anywhere else that are coming to enjoy the films together. Um, and that combination with like amazing programming and amazing curation uh, just just makes it such an enjoyable time. Yeah, I, I was, you know, it, making documentaries, uh, you, it's smaller audiences, it's less money. Our producer well knows that. Um, and it's, so the rewards are not the same kind of movie dream awards, mm -hmm. rewards that, that uh, you might think about for fiction films. And I've edited fiction films with movie stars in them and like, you know, uh, it's, it's a whole different world. And, um, but True Foss was always the gift. Like this mm -hmm. is what you do it for. You do it to make a film, screen it beautifully and have an audience engage with it and be around your friends. And it just felt like, oh, I, I almost think my third film, a film called Fake It So Real, I think I made it to try to get back to True Falls. <laughs> it was like, almost like, I mean, I had always wanted to make my wrestling film, um, which is what the, that film's about. But I think really when I'm thinking about it, I was like, I just gotta get back to True Falls. Mm -hmm. And I love Sundance, actually. I, I think it's, um, it's really different. Um, it, the, the pressure is, is kind of a fun kind of pressure mm -hmm. if you're in my position because it's like, it's a dream. You know, you get to be living your dream of being a, I mean, you know, it's like the thing that you imagine when you're, when I was a video store clerk before there were no video stores anymore, uh, I rem I'm, I'm dreamed of being at Sundance, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so to get to go do that is amazing. But True Foss is, is, is different. But now, so now I like force my friends to come because it's not the same for me anymore as a, Colum Columbia resident now. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's more like okay, you know, it's it's somebody coming to my town. Um, so I, we we started True False on Sunday night. That was our that was our goal. <laughs> uh, and Robin Bennett, you started a production company called House of Nods. So mm -hmm. what what is House of Nod? Uh, House of Nod is a production company that Ben and I started in 2010, um, based in New York City, and we specialize in working on films, fiction and nonfiction music videos, some commercial stuff. Um, but kind of our mantra is that we created a space where we work on only things that are interesting to us, right? Um, and we use any money we make from that to put into our own films. And that's, that's kind of what House of Nod is. Mm -hmm. okay. And anything, anything else you're excited about for True False this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, it's, it's a, there's no bad movies at True False, which is which is crazy. You know, it's, it's overwhelming. It's it's great. I mean, it's it's you know, it's super exciting. I mean, and well, I want to say before, but we're actually producing Rob's film. Um, Bennett and I are producing. So, <laughs> the way this the way this works is like, shoot, he shot my my film. I'm producing his film. Bennett's producing both things. It's like super collaborative, which is the spirit of True False. And a lot of the teams here are probably. Uh, thinking that way as well. But I would say everyone should see Hale County um, uh, if you can. Um, it's one of the great movies I've seen recently. We, we saw it together at Sundance, cried, um, and uh, was so excited for Ramel Ross, the director. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's, 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 it's very exciting. I'm very excited to see Black Mother. I'm very excited to see America, a few other things, and obviously the parties. Yeah. <laughs> and what are film. you excited to see? Oh, shoot. I... I think uh, Fathers and Sons. Oh, yeah. That's on yeah. My list. yeah. Uh, oh, 
Uh, definitely Bisbee 17. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a test, and you um, didn't yeah. <laughs> And I think, actually, I think those are my top two that I wanted to see. Oh, good. So. Well, because we're doing this interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say for that? Oh, no, I said, and I'm excited to see our film. Yeah. If, if other and people wanted to see Bisbee 17, where and when could they see it? Well, here's the thing. So, so <laughs> the, we're not supposed to say this probably because Sundance will get mad, but I cut seven minutes out of the movie, out, out of Sundance, so the real premiere of the movie is Friday at 2.15 at the Missouri Theater. Um, so that is going to be like the real legit premiere, first time that the actual final cut of the movie uh, screens. And, and my children are getting out of school to come see it. It's going to be a party. And then it's also playing Big Rag Tag, which is my favorite. Every single one of my films has played Big Rag Tag, and it's the best place to watch a movie. It's also playing a couple other places. I love Rag Tag. Rag Tag's great. It's the best. All right, well, I think thank you all for being here. And hey, thanks thank for you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>